my life journey of being whatever or whosoever I was until now. Mm -hmm. And it's time to be the new person that I've been preparing for mm -hmm. so long. Yeah, it's time now. Time to be that person. Very good. So let's talk a little bit more about that person. What do you need to know about who you're becoming? So two words come to my mind, healer and guide. So guiding others and healing others. Mm -hmm. Guiding others to find their path, which will lead them to their ultimate purpose, to source. And obviously, I'll have to heal them so that they can follow that path. So it's becoming that person who can do all of this mm -hmm. for us. So in the last session or in, in Akshat's first session, we talked about how he's connected to the inner earth beings and bringing up that energy and out through the heart space. What can you tell him about that or about other healing abilities that he has in this life? So again, two words, heal, oh, sorry, heart and emotions. Mm -hmm. So heal the heart heal the emotions um, and pranic keeps coming in my head as well mm -hmm. pranic healing that is something I need to learn in that will help me with my clients and will somehow merge BQH and Pranic together. Mm -hmm. And I'll also use Pyramid Heal in my BQH to heal certain specific kind of people. And I'll be guided to do that. I can't use it for everyone. Not mm -hmm. everyone is allowed to enter the problem. So in one of his sessions, he was shown himself being taken into the pyramids and learning more about this healing. What else can you tell him about how he can use this pyramid healing to help others? So he can use different aspects of it. Um, when he's doing a pyramid healing session, he can create a pretend pyramid, which will amplify the healing process, the healing energies. Sort of with codents, just make the client sit in the middle and kind of create a pyramid just with codents. And I see white codents for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, uh, use different elements, water, earth, fire, air, to heal those specific kind of clients. Um, you can use sound, you can use smell, you can use color. You can merge all of these and combine a unique kind of modality itself. Mm. And then with all of this, 
take the person, cleanse the person, take the person in the pyramid, heal him or her, and just bring them out. It'll free them from their beliefs, from what's holding them back. It'll heal them on all levels. It'll expedite their healing. And so he'll know when to use this type of healing with his clients? Yes. I get as if who has their heart, it's something to do with heart, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure. I just keep getting, you'll find out, you'll know. You'll know. Okay. Very good. And so he has had some, um, some other sessions where he was connected to the god Horus, and he wanted to know more about his connection to that Egyptian god. What can you tell him about that? One is, I just see a hand pointing towards the sky, to the council. Hmm. To the Council of Light? Yeah. Would you like to bring them through to answer that question? We can hold it for a while. Okay. And maybe... Come back to that when we bring forward yeah. the Council? Okay. Yeah. Be yeah. Beautiful. He was also given some information that he holds these purple electricity balls within... And he's wondering, what does that mean? And how can he use that to help others? They immediately said anything to do with pyramid, just ask the council. <laughs> okay. All right, we'll hold all that. Let's ask about um, Rich's session. Um, Rich's guides said there was a message for Akshat. Um, is there any way that we can find out what that message was? They handed me a jug filled with water mm -hmm. to drink. And it's sort of, I am drinking directly from that jug. And uh, it's sort of, they're saying it will raise your vibration. Mm. Is that a metaphor for something or... It's not like, not something that I need to do in reality, mm -hmm. but it's like, I keep hearing elixir, I keep hearing light, elixir of light or um, drink that and it'll heal you, drink that and it'll raise your vibration. Is this elixir, is this just bringing light into the body? Or is there something different he needs to know? Yes, that's exactly what it is. So with her healing, um, he's wondering if there is a quicker way to heal someone, almost like the guides were doing in the work that he did with her. So they say, if you want, you can ask for guide help and ask them to take the charge of the healing mm. rather than driving it. Mm -hmm. You can just simply ask them to heal whatever the thing is and they'll completely do it for you mm. end to end. That's the quickest way. Very good. Is it important in these types of sessions for like when we're working with a client, is it, should we just ask for the guides to completely do the healing or is it important for the client to learn how to work with their own healing in a session? If you as a practitioner is clear and like clear on 
what needs to be done. And if you don't have a time constraint, you can do it. But if there is a time constraint, then if you are not certain about what you need to do, you can ask for help. Okay, very good. And so he wants to know why he has such difficulty sleeping after he does a BQH session. Awareness. Um, consciousness. So my awareness, my consciousness expands every time I do these sessions energetically. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like there is a shift happening in my brain. Sort of my brain is expanding. I literally see this image as if my brain is growing. Mm -hmm. Size is increasing. So there's a shift happening. There's a change happening because I'm not yet on the higher frequency i'm i'm getting there mm -hmm. but i'm not yet there that's why the more i do this the more i heal myself the more i get closer to higher frequency it'll be easier so it's kind of increasing my frequency as well mm -hmm. these sessions when i do it on someone else anything yeah. that he can do to sort of help himself get better sleep after Cleanse. a session energy cleansing okay what's the best way for him to do that certain meditations calling archangel michael to disconnect the cords to asking for his help to cleanse you, to remove what's not yours and send it back to source. And I'm just going to ask your healing team to heal you and protect you after that. Mm -hmm. Very That'll good. Do. Thank you for that information. He has um, gotten the information that he could take a sabbatical and take a little bit of time and then begin to work on starting his own business, doing quantum healing. He'd like a little bit more guidance about how he can make that happen. He's going in the right direction. He did the right thing. Speaking to his boss and that will kind of trigger all the right things that needs to happen um, he will very soon leave Ireland and go back to India mm -hmm. and it's unlikely that he'll come back the thing save some money for yourself they're again kind of pointing towards the sky but this time they're saying source you can ask for divines or source help if you want mm. you can call them for guidance very good. Anything that else that he needs to know that would be helpful about that? They just repeated. Call the source mm -hmm. for help. Okay, very good. And he saw a vision of um, his future daughter. And we're wondering, can a soul have multiple fragments of their soul incarnated on earth at the same time? And could 
the soul of his daughter also be incarnated as another person on this earth at this time? Not in the same reality, not in the same dimension. Okay. But that generally doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. And the thing, there generally is no need for that. Um, but sure, I mean, it can happen, but generally it's a rare thingy. Okay. Uh, in this case, it might happen. So they show me Richa Mm -hmm. as an angel Mm. with wings, literally beautiful white wings, beautiful white dress and all of that. And if not Richa, someone else from her community will come. Mm sort of as if her soul has a different community itself, um, a different group, angelic sort of group. Mm-hmm. Um, it's different to other souls. And uh, yeah. Very good. So this soul will just be very connected to Risha. If the soul decides to split, yes, they'll be connected. If another soul from that group came in, even then they will be connected in this lifetime because of that common connection. Mm. She'll be almost like motherly figure for her. Beautiful. So just recently, his brother's family and his brother went through a terrible car accident. And he's wondering, what can you tell him about that accident and what caused that to happen? Somebody did something. Somebody caused them somebody as if I see as if somebody was something was tied around the car sort of a rope or something um not physically energetically I'm getting an image somebody pulled that rope and the car flipped uh I see there are multiple people who did this. Three or four. Can you tell who they are? His partners, the company, his business partners, two of them. And obviously, they're seeing my aunt and uncle as well. Is this the aunt and uncle that had caused the other things that we looked at in the first session? Yes. So how does one protect themselves? And we've seen quite a bit that has been done, the dark magic used on Akshat's family. How does one protect themselves from this type of thing happening? They're saying uh, this is the reason they didn't want to share the information when I asked for it in my meditation. Mm. Uh, And I felt as if she saw something. Um, Just remove the magic and just set a really strong intention with source light, just wrap them around multiple times with that light and set a very specific, strong intention. 
you can ask for a stone's help as well. Sort of tourmaline or obsidian to do it for them. Mm -hmm. It's just they'll have to carry it around them all the time. So you can ask the stone to kind of protect them from any negative impacts, negative energies, anything of that sort. Mm -hmm. It will create a shield around them. So is this something that Akshat could do on their behalf since he has the awareness of what's happening or does it have to be the person themselves to do that, set that intention? So wrapping them in source light, he can definitely do that for anyone. Mm -hmm. But the stone thing, they'll have to do it for themselves. And it's kind of valid for anyone and everyone. And these rules kind of are valid for anyone. Mm. So could they wear like a crystal bracelet or a pendant and set the intention for that pendant or that bracelet to protect them? Does that work the same? The yeah. crystals? Yes, they can put put that on their body mm -hmm. or just carry it in their pocket or just keep it in their vicinity, mm -hmm. keep it around them in their energy field. Very good. Could we send some healing to his family today? Would that be appropriate? The same. Akshat asked for this multiple times before, and we have been already doing it. Okay. And ask for counsel's help to remove that magic today. Okay. Very good. The healing will expedite. Thank you. Can you tell us the difference between, I know a lot of us were so programmed to believe that source is masculine, but it's not. Can you explain the difference between the he, she, divine, and source? What do we need to know about that? The moment you started asking this question, they were sort of laughing. <laughs> I can understand. <laughs> As if, I mean, we try so hard to understand all of this. Um, it's like they're saying the different aspects, <clears throat> sorry, aspects of source. Source is one. And then source has no sort of it's just one. There is no two. Mm -hmm. There's no gender to source. It's everything. But the divine has two aspects. Mm. The masculine and the female. And just the way everything, everyone has a masculine and a, f a female aspect to it. The divine's role is to balance that. Mm. Those aspects in that thing or someone. B, it's a female human, a male human, a transgender Anyone doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. They have both the aspects in them. They have both the qualities, both the natures, both the characteristics. By ignoring one, 
you're ignoring the source. Mm. If you're a man, don't ignore the female side of yours. If you're a woman, don't ignore those masculine side of yours. You're simply rejecting the source with that. You're rejecting the divine with that. And you're not, you won't come into full potential in any aspects of your life until you do that. You won't be able to, to, to come into, to reach your maximum capacity, your full potential. You need to balance those two things. You need to learn that, to be able to do that. Mm. Care for both the sides of yours equally with love. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you for that. So can you explain, um, his question is, how do you explain quantum healing hypnosis to a common person? And I added on to that, um, how does this process that we do with our clients, how does that work in connecting us to our higher, to our higher guidance, our higher self and to the higher beings? You as a practitioner, the client, everyone is connected to their higher self mm -hmm. and their spiritual team at all times. <sighs> this kind of, so I see as if there's a cord, sort of a rope connected from my head to my higher self and my spiritual team. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of weak, um, but a little torn from here and there, a little very. These sessions helps us to strengthen that connection, reestablish that connection and that sort of rope, that cord, you know, mm -hmm. it takes its, it takes its own, I mean, it has its own energy then. Mm -hmm. This information, the help just starts to flow more easily. Mm. Is it because of the intention behind the session that creates that sort of opening for that information to flow? Yes. The intention which sets the energy. So it all happens energetically. Just having an intention to be wanting to establish a connection with your team is enough. For some people, it's hard. Mm -hmm. for their because of their beliefs, because of the lack of awareness. That's why they struggle to do that. Mm -hmm. And they don't believe in such things. They just they kind of have this very strong veil, very which they can't through, see through. Mm -hmm. So recently, as um, Akshat was doing some quantum healing work with his friends, um, he's noticed that his family or their family feel like he may be dabbling in some things that are not of the highest and greatest good, um, some witchcraft and things like that. What does he need to understand more about his family's belief system? He understands where they're coming from. He understands they're afraid for their daughter. Mm -hmm. And it's their fear which made them 
ignore this. They believe in it. They live on it. Mm-hmm. They talk about these things every single day. They live these things. And yet, they ignore this thing. Because of their shock, of their fear, their protection. They wanted to protect their daughter. Mm-hmm. And he just need to forgive them. That's it. Very good. So just you, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. No, you're fine. Keep going. I almost feel as if a two scratch on my heart because of that. What is that scratch on your heart? As if that kind of allegations, those kind of words scarred scarred me. Mm-hmm. My intentions, my feelings, my love for them. Yes. I feel sad because of that. Yeah. What can we do to begin not understanding that it's their fear that holds them back from understanding the work that you're here to do? What can we do to begin to repair and release that scratch on your heart? What do you want to use to heal that? Just green light to mm-hmm. release that fear, that sadness, that scar, mm-hmm. and just completely replace it with happiness, love, and forgiveness. Beautiful. So as you allow that green energy to flow into your heart and begin to do all that to repair work, visualize sending that energy also out to her family, helping them to just release any fears that they're holding, to open up and expand their minds in any way that they can be expanded today. Just allowing them to release fear of the unknown. Tell me what you see or what you experience. I feel warmth in my upper body. Mm -hmm. And I see as if something is evaporating from them. It's going up in the clouds into the source from her family. Mm-hmm. As if the fear is kind of evaporating and going to the source. Filling them kind of with more peace and calmness. Very good. And so as that energy continues to do the healing work, he has some questions about the Hindu gods and deities. Should we go ahead and ask those here or are those um, council of light questions as well? Come to. Okay. <clears throat> Beautiful. So Let's go ahead and begin to bring the Council of Light forward, just asking them to join us. Tell me when you're connected. Yeah, the moment you took the name. It's like they're always funny about this thing, the way we meet. Last time they said, you know, they kind of hugged me and kind of, cheered me and this time they gave me a high five (laughs) tell me about um tell me about who you see who's who's giving you a high five can you describe them for me so 
three beings. Mm -hmm. And it's just ball of light. Just ball of light. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like as if they display different things based on the situation. So they just showed me a hand, giving me a high five. Mm -hmm. Because that's all they wanted to give me for my human experience. Mm -hmm. If I was something else, they would have done it differently or done something else. Mm -hmm. Or nothing at all. Depends. Uh, so the three of them, the one in the middle, I'll tell you this, and they just told me something to tell you. Okay. So the one in the middle is purple yes and the ones on the sides they're kind of blue mm -hmm. but with a hint of purple mm -hmm. in the center so very light as if their light is turning is starting to change mm -hmm. um they told me they basically told you to deepen me i don't know why they want you deeper? Yeah, like kind of mm -hmm. de deepen me further. Okay. So go ahead and take some nice deep breaths. Just relaxing even more into the surface beneath you. Going deeper and deeper. Just allowing your consciousness to go even further, stretching to the boundaries that you've never been before. Breathing deeply and allowing that air to push you even further. I will count you down from 10 to 1. And with each number, you will go even deeper than the one before it. Beginning with 10. Allowing yourself to feel even more of that strong energy flowing through your body. Nine, connecting even more deeply with the council and the beings that are here with us today. Eight, deeper and deeper down. Seven, six, allowing the breath to connect you even more deeply to source. Five, breathing deeply. Four, deeper down now. Three, just allowing all of that energy to flow easily through your body. Two and one. And as you have deepened your connection, tell me what you see now or what you notice around you. The divine wants to talk. Mm, beautiful. Just allow that energy to flow throughout your body. Tell me when you feel connected. Both are here. The male and the female. Mm. Welcome and thank you for being with us today. What messages would you like to bring through for us today? There's an event coming very soon yes 
prepare yourself for that. Energetically, humanly, you can choose to prepare materialistically as well. Keep seeing water mm-hmm. as if the land is going under water. It's raining, storm, ice, snow, and the sea is just growing and growing and kind of engulfing the earth. So you said you this event will be happening soon. Can you give us any information on when these earth changes will begin? Keep showing me 23rd October. It's today. Mm-hmm. Changes have begun. They're coming. And they keep telling me December. December. What's happening in December? The darkest month of the year. Why is that? For some, it'll be difficult. Because why all of a sudden I'm seeing a cow? white cow Mm -hmm. like literally standing in my face just as if that's Kaya that's Mother Earth and she's kind of going now I'm unable to understand anything Mm -hmm. so the cow As we tune into that, what does that cow represent? What does he need to know about that vision? The moment I said it, it just ran, ran away. Mm. It just ran away to full speed. As if the dark horses are kind of trying to cause for the chaos. Mm. And that cow is kind of standing at the beach trying to stop the waves coming in somehow so how is that scene connected to what we need to understand about what's coming tsunami is what I keep hearing Mm -hmm. and in certain parts of the world. Is that an energetic tsunami or is that a literal tsunami? Energetic. Okay. Tell me more about that. We don't want to scare you. We are not trying to scare you, we are okay. not. Okay. So we are trying to share some information. Yes. Which will be helpful for the humans. Okay. So what do so we So don't need... be worried. Okay. Don't be worried. What do we need to know to prepare ourselves for this energetic tsunami that's coming? The immediate thing that I got is send love to Mother Earth. That will increase Gaia's frequency as well. That will give her the strength to sort of fight back and support. Support the beings. Fight back. Fight is an incorrect word, but 
energetically I'm seeing as if from inside it's kind of pushing and pushing and all the dark forces are coming and kind of trapped in a bubble mm -hmm. so it's pushing from everywhere and it's kind of trapping the dark forces and just a small bubble which is difficult and the source will kind of take care of it then so there's a lot of fear um, among people about who are worried about these earth changes and the changes and the shifts in Gaia. And if they're in a safe place, what can you tell us? Or what do we need to be aware of about these shifts and changes? There's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing you should fear. You must not give into the fear. It disconnects you from us. Mm -hmm. So do not give into that fear. We are here to support you, to feed you to help you, to guide you, and to love you. We are here with you always. So don't be afraid of what's happening or what's about to come. Welcome it with open arms. and manifest what you want mm. out of it. Now you can expect, now you can try and manifest a million dollars for yourself, <laughs> but that will, that won't be of great help energetically. So manifest things on energetic level as well, mm. as much as on materialistic level. Materialistic things are here to support you, to give you the comfort that you need while you raise your vibration, while you improve yourself energetically and establish a stronger, clear connection with us. Those material, materialistic things are only there to support you. Mm. So don't live on them. Live on the energy. Positive intentions. Live on happiness and love. That is what has kept you alive. Now, when we say alive, do not take this negatively. We say alive, that has taken you further in your journey. That happiness and that love will further take you in your journey. To love every single being around you. There is no place for hatred on this earth. Gaia is not made up of hatred. She only has love for you to give love, share the love, and send love back to her. She will protect you. But do not be afraid.
your fear attracts the darkness. Your fear invites the darkness. And it starts with a little tiny hole in your heart. And it starts to expand. And it turns your heart black. So don't let that happen. Anyway, nothing wrong can happen to you. Nothing will. We are here. Source is here. Sources, seeing, feeling, everything. And that is the reason we have come today to give you the message that don't be afraid. Beautiful. Thank you for that. So you've given us some dates today. And I know we try not to look at dates, but is there any additional information that you can share with us about what we can expect to happen between now and December? Anything we need to know? They're showing me multiple things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share only the things which needs to be shared today. Okay. The more light workers, no more warriors of light, they'll wake up to support the changes, push the changes, to wake others up. It's already happening and it's going to happen at a faster rate. Mm -hmm. So just allow that to happen and do not let others influence you, brainwash you. And this sort of message is specifically for light workers. Mm. There are enough energies around which are sort of trying to bring you down. And we are using this language because humans can associate with this language more. This is not to drive any fear in them. This is only being used to help the common people understand. To everyone understand. These words do not exist in our dictionary. So focus on the positive. That will there will be events coming up where people will feel frustrated mm -hmm. with others. With neighbors, with loved ones, with your government. But do not give in to that frustration. Do not let your vibration go down. Do not let your fears. and fringe your energy. Keep your vibration high. Because you are on the right path. And there's nothing which can happen to you. The whole team there protecting you, guiding you, helping you trust in them and give all your fears to them. Just send 
all your fears to them and they will help you. Just put it in a ball and send it to them. Very good. And so we here talk about this shift happening and I know there's been a lot of information about how it's going to take place and what is going to happen, but from the divine's perspective, will there be any type of energy coming in? Like some people call it a solar flash or there's different names for it, but that energy that will come in to assist people in releasing the density that they need in order to shift into the higher dimensions or what can you tell us about that? It's happening already. Mm. It's on the way. I mean, people are and have already shifted to that dimension. That doesn't mean they moved out of earth. Mm-hmm. They're just on a different frequency on a different vibration. The emotions, the feelings, their experiences, the places, the humans, the food, everything around them has changed because that is what they are inviting with their vibration, their frequency. as if there's a bubble created around them and they will only invite the higher frequency things. So that is the shift which is gonna happen. The more people shift to that dimension, the easier it will be for them, the, for others as well. A person on a lower frequency on 3D may struggle around a 5D person. Mm. And when that shift is done, Obviously, there won't be any struggle. There still be differences in your frequency from from person to person. It depends. It varies, but it's sort of an upgrade. As of from Windows ten, you're upgraded to Windows eleven, mm-hmm. but. Everyone has different applications in their computer, Mm -hmm. which allows them to function differently. And so from your perspective, where are we in this shifting process? Are, Are we getting closer to moving through this darkness, this chaos, and, and getting into a more stable way of living? I get a 10 to 15 percent. 10 to 15 to go, or we have more than that? (laughs) 10, 15 percent has shifted. Okay. So it sounds like we have a lot more to go. (laughs) And because this process, we have expedited the process. Mm -hmm. We are trying, we have been trying already for years. Mm -hmm. Now it's just time to do so. So that is why it is difficult for all of you. Is it happening so slowly because there's so much darkness still on the planet or just because people are not waking up quick enough? We have been, for the lack of better words, and don't be hung up on these words, try to get the gist out of it. Mm -hmm. 
we have been trying to help humans traditionally traditionally in double quotes and that traditionally means just sending them signs meeting them in the meditations to different humans who are already awakened if you're going for a psychic reading all of that and that has been slow because we wanted and expected humans to respond faster and adapt in their ways mm-hmm. to want akshat is just running out of words <laughs> um is he having trouble converting the frequency or the information coming in it's just the words <laughs> we're trying to use the best words he's um, trying he's trying to find the right words to go with what he's receiving yeah yeah um so humans had their still have the human choices Mm-hmm. we were guiding their choices we trying to we were trying to suggest them give give them signs so that they can take the best choices for them mm-hmm. now because we won't say we ran out of time that that will be incorrect but the darker forces mm-hmm. have grown to an extent where it's we do not want any further troubles or chaos for humans or earth or on earth it has reached to an extent where we want to push the awakening mm-hmm. we want to push the humans without interfering their choices mm-hmm. still so that they are stronger enough they are their vibration is strong enough yes to be able to cope up or not get influenced with the dark forces mm-hmm. it's because of that traditional way the process had been slow mm. again just to remind do not get hung up by the word traditional okay and now because we are pushing for that mm-hmm. that's where the process is going to be got faster and the percentage is going to increase so can you tell us from the divine's perspective from source's perspective what is source doing at this time to remove the darkness from this planet to the multiple things um a light workers there are already enough light workers and they are trying to awaken them at a faster rate mm. it's all source plan mm-hmm. b the sort of sending beings which never existed on earth before mm. for the support for the push for the help for the guidance and for the love they have visited they have been on earth but only for for a little while um for a short time things like that but now they are coming in more numbers mm-hmm. 
and sort of the types of beings, the variety of these beings is a lot more. Are and they are... Are these yes. beings um, existing in, in the sky above our or earth in the atmosphere or are they physically here on the earth with us? They are energetically here. Okay. They're coming from different dimensions, dimension mm -hmm. higher than what we have at the moment. Okay. And I keep seeing 9, 11, 12, 15, so on. Is that dimensions? Yes. Like the higher dimensions? Yes. Amazing. Because Earth was designed with a specific intention. With certain rules, if you will. Mm -hmm. We can, but do not want to. And might not directly interfere mm. with human choices, with humans' will. And that is the reason those beings are energetically visiting humans more now. For sort of, if you want to say, an indirect guidance and indirect support. Is there a way for us to be able to connect with these beings in a more physical way? Or are they just here for an energetic support? Um, a, uh, just set your intention so that those beings can help you. Just keep yourself open to that. And B, once your vibration increases to 5D, mm -hmm. you will start to experience those things. Mm, wonderful. You just, for now, you have to keep yourself open for the experience, for the help, for the guidance from them. Mm -hmm. And that's it. It's exciting, interesting mm -hmm. to be able to see and experience those beings. Yes. But it's not required. It's they're there already with you, around you at all times. So you might have an experience for a fraction of second mm -hmm. during, during the day, once a week, once a month once a year or once in your lifetime where you see something different something unimaginable around you see feel or just know smell it's them and it's okay if you don't feel no see smell anything it's okay at this stage we do not have more than this information to give you around these beings. Mm 
okay. when the right time comes we will come to you Beautiful. you will no yes that's very I, exciting i need to have some water okay. my body is heating up all right again. go ahead do you have water next to you yeah. okay you doing okay is yeah. energy pretty intense for you yeah. i didn't make anything <laughs> You've got the divine speaking through you. It's pretty high energy. It's pretty amazing. You okay to continue? I just, they're just <laughs> in the back of my mind, they just said, you're doing great. Yeah, you are doing amazing. And they say, they say the same for you too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, okay. They're just saying for you, there's uh, a lot more to come. So just fasten your seatbelts. <laughs> My own guides have told me that before. So <laughs> yeah, as if. I could almost sense your guide somewhere around mm -hmm. in my mind. Yeah. And as if they're smiling at this thing. <laughs> I love it. I can feel when you were talking about the beings that are here with us, I, it almost felt like I was just being hugged from the back, almost like we're here, we're around you. Just trust and know that we're here. It's beautiful. They just kind of showed me a hand. There you go. <laughs> I love it. So do you still feel connected to the divine or should we go back to the council? Tell me how you feel. The council on the side, they're almost saying, use the opportunity <laughs> to talk to divine. Talk to divine. So as we were just speaking about the changes that we're going to be experiencing. And it sounds like the energy is going to get a little bit more chaotic for us. But my understanding is that maybe more towards spring of next year, spring for this half of the, the planet, um, we might begin to see more of a balance spring and summertime. From your perspective, what can you tell us about what we can expect maybe for the first half of next year? We, before we say anything, we just want to remind that the future keeps on changing. Yes. And it's based on your choices mm -hmm. and divine's plan. Many, 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 many different factors which we cannot imagine. Yes. So they're also kindly suggesting not to get tied up okay. with, the with the timelines. Yeah, I know it's hard not to do that. <laughs> so just keep preparing yourself. Mm -hmm. and it's likely more ET events are likely to happen mm. can you tell us a little bit about that I almost see as if UFOs are coming and more commonly being observed mm -hmm. by the humans with naked eye more frequently than as if those beings are interacting with humans directly, mm -hmm. somehow. And so as we begin to see more of these craft in our skies, do you feel like this is going to bring up more fear amongst humans? Or is that a good thing for them to bring that up to release it? 
again, it depends upon many factors, mm -hmm. human choices. And there are many roads, many ways this can happen. It can be a very, very friendly event. It can be a chaotic event. It can be a very confined event. It, it can be any of those. We do not just yet want to give some specific information. Just not yet. It's, the time is just not yet there. Mm, okay. But these things Again, will help people to start to awaken as they see them. This will start to question, maybe. Again, manifest what you want. Mm. Intentions, manifestation. Keywords for today. <laughs> and to incorporate in your life. And when we say your for every single human. Maybe write that on a sticky note and stick on your wall. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to be funny, sarcastic. <laughs> we do. We, we need these reminders almost daily, don't we? <laughs> So that was just to lighten the mood. Um, so yes, ask what you want and we'll give you that. That's, sorry, that wasn't the right interpretation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Manifest. Cautiously and clearly, what you desire. But as they say, be careful what you wish for. Mm. So, when you say be careful what you wish for, in what ways can we manifest the wrong thing? They want to answer that question a bit differently. Okay. Listen to your heart. Mm -hmm. Listen to your soul. And it will guide you. It will tell you what is the right thing that you need rather than want. Focus on what you need, then what you want. Not just, you don't need a new pair of shoes. You need happiness. You want a fancy car. But you need more comfort in your life. Mm. You need more healing. You need the right emotions, the right feelings, the right people, the right support, the right experiences. You need the guidance. Ask for that. You might want a car. So you already might have two. Two already sitting in your home. You might want a third one. And you ask for it and you get it. And that car, not that we are pointing at the automotive industry that you guys have beautifully constructed. Everything is beautiful here on earth. 
that is just an example that car when it was manufactured employed many that's okay but at the same time must have caused pollution mm -hmm. which impacted more more people than what were employed in that company. Not just people, other beings on your earth, your flora, your fauna, and your mother Gaia. So think everything Think how you can help the planet. Think how you can raise your vibration. Think how you can help yourself and the people around you, the beings around you, and then manifest. It's too much to ask. But you can take small steps. You always can. Ask for the guidance. To help you in this. Very good. So as we've been talking about keeping our vibration and our frequency high and staying out of fear because that creates a disconnect between us and our higher guidance. There are many that are living in parts of the world where the mandates are getting worse and they do fear for their jobs and their well-being. What can you tell those in those areas to stay strong and to stay in their light? So again, there are several things. Mm -hmm. It is their soul contract to experience those things because there is some or the other learning in that experience for them. And they signed up for that. Secondly, As we have been saying, ask for the help. We are here, but the more you ask, the more you get. Imagine it of a buffet. You're there in a buffet. There is food, but you'll get so much in your plate that you can put. But there's nothing stopping you from, from taking another plate. So what we want to say is ask for the help, ask for the healing and things will improve. Very good. So one of the things that many have really struggled with is the mandatory, um, we'll call it the jab, uh, that some are having to get in order to support their family, keep their jobs. And there are some that have said that once you receive that medication, that you're unable to transmute it and I'm hearing differently in sessions. Can you tell us from your perspective, how does one completely transmute the energy of that medication if they feel that they must take that? Some of the information that has been shared with you is correct. 
by eating the right food by increasing your vibration only to save the time for today we're going to say do things which raises your vibration mm. and it will transmute that into positive energies mm -hmm. for you. So just keep working on your vibration. It's not that you have completed the college and your studies can end. It's a lifetime process mm -hmm. to keep studying keep working on your vibration and it will ease the pain for you it will transmute it and that's a key thing which can help you in almost every aspect of your life To give a quick tip, water. Set, if you're concerned, set the, that specific intention in the glass of water mm -hmm. and just drink it. To put in a fancy way, Water can change your life. Mm. It has the consciousness. It has the healing abilities. Mm. It can transmute. It can raise your vibration. It can do whatever you ask it to do. For you. Beautiful. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with us about what's to come? Anything else that we need to know for now to help us through these changing times? Keep doing what you're doing. And by that, they mean, I think they mean they. They're kind of pointing towards you, oh. especially. Okay. Like, keep doing all those things which you're doing. Mm -hmm. Exercising, mm -hmm. eating the right food, sweating, spreading love and positivity, and healing others. And that is what we want to convey for everyone. Do that. Mm -hmm. and and continue to do so. It's not a destination. It's a journey. Focus on those words and it will become easy for you. All these things, they kind of said in general, not just for you. Mm -hmm. By referring you, they just wanted to point out Heather is doing all the right things. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> um, yeah. Beautiful. And keep us close mm. with you. Any meditations in your dreams, in your thoughts. The kind of just sending love and peace to everyone. Thank you so much for that beautiful information. We are so grateful to bring it through today. They are saying, like my counsel kind of pointed that there's some questions on the list. 
Mm-hmm. If you want, if you, if you choose, you can ask the divine. Okay, I was gonna. That's where I was gonna go next. I was gonna see if we wanted to go back to the Horus. Um, those questions, or did the divine want to answer those, or do they still want me to? Sure, we can. Okay, um, and they may. I do have other questions, so maybe we'll come back around to those, but. Can you tell us a little bit more about Akshat's connection to the god Horus? What does he need to understand about that? He needs to stop doubting. <laughs> he needs to let the information just flow and accept what is being presented. Those images that experience was kind of given to him to remind him how strong he is not that he is god horus but he has the abilities To heal others collectively. He needs to meditate every day to become stronger at this. He can collectively heal one certain aspect of A bigger group of people all togetherly at once. The more he meditate, the more stronger he'll be at setting the right intentions. The more he does that, he can use his intention. to heal as many people as he want Mm. in one go. Everyone can do that. Mm. It's his life journey. And that is why those images were shown to him. He doesn't underestimate himself anymore, but he doesn't trust himself completely either so just trust the plan trust the divine trust us trust the source and trust himself and just go with the plan with the flow with the energy and things will unfold beautifully I can, if I wish, once I'm ready, uh, imagine specific people or a city. Mm -hmm. And just imagine The one, just one thing, say it could be fear of snakes. Okay. Collectively for that city or that group of people, I can remove that fear of snake from, from them, for them and send it to the source. I just have to set the intention correctly and strongly. And Anyone can do that. Just set the right intentions. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. It very much does. Yep. So um, he was shown or given a time traveling shaft, and he was wanting to know a little bit more about that and in what ways can he use that? He's just 
not ready yet to use it. Mm -hmm. But when he is, just a matter of imagining it in his hands, holding it, focus on the feeling, on the emotion, the origination, the place it's originating from. He can do it for himself or for others. Mm. So if someone will call him John, if John is, is feeling sad, Akshat with that, shaft, with that shaft can go to the point where that sadness originated, be it this life or any of his past, life, past lives. Mm -hmm. and release those emotions and call the healing for that person or himself in that life. I shall heal that emotion for the rest of the lives in between. Mm, beautiful. So he'll be developing that skill over time then to work with that energy. It's almost as if he doesn't need the other person. He can be the surrogate himself mm -hmm. without any external help. He doesn't need another practitioner to take him into the trance or into the uh, into other life he can be that surrogate himself mm. makes sense mm -hmm. absolutely and yeah. it's almost like certain people with certain frequency can do that mm. if you wish you can do that too. It needs practice. Yes. It needs self-trust. It needs a lot of practice. And Akshata is far away from that. Just yet. Just not yet. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll get there. So best to do that type of work, just going into meditation and setting the intention to connect with someone else's past lives for healing? Yes. If it helps as a ritual, we understand it can be difficult. So as a ritual, you can use a particular object for that. A stone, a shaft, a rod, could be anything that you can connect with. Or you can use the other person's belonging, um, anything that they can give you. If they use a pen daily, use that. If they use a shirt, use that. Okay. Very good. That's very interesting to know. Thank you for that. So he was also told um, after one of his sessions that he would begin to see crystalline energy and um, that things won't be the same, but he hasn't really noticed much of a difference. Is that just something that needs to develop for him as well? Or what does he need to know about that? His energy has started to shift in that healing kind of expedited the shift for him. Mm. Because of other factors that Akshat is aware of in his personal life, he couldn't focus. And also his self-trust is a hindrance. Mm. And also, 
he didn't trust himself but he has seen things not things but sort of energy is moving around him sort of just a little tiny thing here and there mm -hmm. it is happening at his time he needs to trust and things will unfold by crystalline energy by real essence of energy is he will be able to connect he will be able to see if he wants he will be able to connect with that energy it could be with anything energy of an object energy of a human any anything and understand what is it made up of not materialistically but energetically by made up of we mean every being or everything has a specific characteristic you can say mm -hmm. of energy so say for example a person could be kind in general that has key characteristic so if he allows himself he can connect to that energy and know what kind of person is he or she <sighs> making sense mhm mm yeah keep um, keep going <clears throat> so uh, he can sense it mm -hmm. but he doesn't trust it when he is speaking to someone he does get a sense of it what makes that person and he can mentally not literally tear that outer shell of that person Mm -hmm. and look within that person the soul of that person mm -hmm. if a person is saying something he can get to the bottom or he, he gets the real essence of it which mm -hmm. is difficult for people in general so that is a very human way of explaining yes so is But, it almost like a person that would consider themselves to be empathic where they can feel the energy of another person he just has that ability to to tune in more deeply to a person's thoughts feelings and emotions maybe yes more deeply than the person can do it for themselves mm -hmm. if he wants he can do that for things around him as well which are not human mm -hmm. that's what it means and again every human akshat um okay. 
every hum human has that ability. It's just a matter of raising your frequency, raising your vibration, and focusing on that particular thing, on, on that particular intention. And that is a reason we love Earth, humans, and the beings so much. Because there is so much that they can do, more than they know of. Mm -hmm. Connect with yourself. Connect with your soul. Connect with your higher self. And you'll shed those outer layers like an onion without crying. And when you say connect, I know some people, they don't understand quite how to connect. They feel like they have to physically do something. Can you, from your perspective, give us just the simplest way that we can connect with all of these higher aspects of, of self and our higher guidance? Words spoken or written makes a huge impact. Mm. A huge impact. If it is difficult for you to set an intention, which is what you should do and should be enough. If it is difficult for you, Repeat certain words. That's a very physical way you can use to connect. Repeat certain words or write certain words. And the words could be anything that you want to use to connect. As simple as I want to connect with my higher self or I am connected with my higher self. Mm -hmm. Use that. Very good. Thank you for that. And so he was also given in one of his sessions, the purple electricity balls. Could you give him a little bit more information? Is that something yet to come or something that he can begin to work with now? The do whole information for himself and for others it's almost like milestones for him. And they will come up, they will open up at the right time. For him and for others around him. So there's nothing that he needs to know or should be worried about at the moment. It will happen when it will happen but it will happen. Very good. And we were talking about energy just a moment ago and crystalline energy. And in Akshat's first session, as the light um, got dimmer, I began to see a lot of different colors around him. Um, I've seen a little bit of color tonight, but I'm just wondering, can you tell us a little bit about what that energy was or what I was seeing? Um. Firstly, it's his energy field, aura, mm -hmm. you can say. Okay. Secondly, um, when he connects with different beings, mm -hmm. different experiences, different lifetimes, different anything, and then anyone that changes. Mm. So it's like you're a sponge, you're dipped in a blue water and you turn blue. And then you're dipped in a green water and you get the green. So it's, it's those experiences, those beings that he was getting connected to, mm. which was Shifting his energy, which was changing the colors. Very 
Very good. I wasn't sure if I was just making that up or <laughs> where that was coming from, but it was quite, quite amazing. I'm saying not everyone can see it. Um, let's see. So we were talking earlier about um, his brother and their family going through the accident. And we were told to ask for the council's help in removing uh that dark energy can the divine assist with that today council the council okay can we bring forward the council and ask them for assistance with removing that dark magic they're asking to call all four of them all four four family members mm -hmm. Um, can you help me with this? Just suggest and it will happen. Okay. So we just want to bring forward the, maybe the higher selves and the spirit guides of Akshat's family that were involved in this accident to assist us in bringing forward their souls for the purpose of removing any of these darker energies that have been placed around them, any of the dark magic and allowing us to assist them in this process if they so choose. Tell me what you see. So my brother, my sister-in-law, my niece and nephew, they're here. And the guides are here as well. Very good. And they appear blackish at the moment because of that magic and so what do we need to do to begin to remove and release that black magic what would the council suggest what would their guides suggest so sort of remove it put it on a ball of light send it to the source bring the light to heal that person, mm -hmm. fill the empty places, heal the wounds, and then wrap them in a protective sheet. Beautiful. So let's just begin to focus in on these beautiful beings in front of us. Sorry. Go ahead. And do this one by one. So okay. Complete the process. No, complete the process with one. Send it back. Complete the process with one. Send it back. Okay. I'm going to allow you to do this and you tell me what you're doing as you move through each person. So I bring forth my brother. Remove all the dark energies, the black magic, put it in a ball of light and I send it to the source. And it feels, it seems as if he's all wounded mm -hmm. completely. So I bring the light of source to heal him completely from head to toe. All his wounds, all the gaps, and everything. And he's good as new now. Mm -hmm. And now that light is kind of wrapping around him from head to toe. He's fully wrapped in that bubble and fully protected completely. Mm, very good. With the intention set in that shield that any negative energies, any black magic, any negative intentions which are not best for him or his purpose will just bounce back and go back in the direction they came from with mm. love. So I send my brother back. My sister-in-law comes. All the black magic and negative energies have been removed. It seems as if there's a lot more on my sister-in-law. Mm. What is than that? just this? As if it something was done previously as well on her. Mm. Can you remove that as well? Yeah. It's like one ball, two ball, three ball. Four ball, five ball. The 
seven balls mm. and all sent to the divine, sent to the source. And then I bring the light, healing her completely, making her new, healing the wounds, filling the gaps. And wrapped in the shield with the intention that all the negativity will just bounce off and go back in the direction it came from with love. And I send her back. I bring my nephew forward and remove all of the negativity. Send, put it in a ball, send it to the source, bring the light, heal him. Completely unshield him. And send him back. I do the same with my knees. Remove. Ball of light sent to the source, and there are three balls now uh, on her. So three balls sent to the source, bring the healing light, completely healing her and shielding her. Sent back, thanking their guides for help. Yeah. What do you see? Okay. It's like um, they all were turning into new as like as if they were shining mm. and, and they were kind of wrapped in this oval shaped bubble fully protected and that shield was of golden light. Mm. So is this something that Akshat can do when he's in meditation to any family members that are experiencing this? Yes. The people, such as like, we're just giving an example here, mm -hmm. like yourself, can do it as well, who are experienced, who know how to do this, they can do it too for anyone they want, but it's important that they wear the protection, protection of source the golden light around them mm -hmm. before they start the process. So the person who's doing the healing should bring the golden light first. Yes. Okay. Very good. And because you did that in the beginning of the session, we didn't have to do this again for Akshay. He was protected. Very good. Well, that just made that connection for me as to why I have that in my <laughs> script. So thank you for that validation. <laughs> Very good. Any other messages that they would like to bring through for humanity? Anything important for us to know or understand? I think the divine has shared everything okay. that we needed to know today. Very good. Are there any final messages today that you'd like to share or are we complete? We are done and they send lots of love. Oh, thank you so much. It was just an honor to be able to connect with the divine, with the council of light, with Akshat's higher self and guides. Very grateful and honored to do this work with him today. They're almost saying this is not the last time. I'm looking forward to the next. It's going to be his turn one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right. So we're going to begin to bring your light body back to your physical body now.